Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about a DC shunt motor. This is our example number four and we continue with a little bit complicated situation in this example. So let's move on. We have a DC shunt motor and it requires a thermal voltage of 250 volts and that is required for a motor speed of 1800 RPM, so rotations per minute. The motor constant is given, which is 1.25 Webers, and also the armature resistance 200 milliohms, and also the field resistance of 100 ohms. Okay, what is the required situation here? The calculator required input power, so the P sub in. That is the situation in this case. So let's look at our solutions, and again we begin with a model. This is our DC shunt motor model. This is the field which is then shunted, which will shunt then the armature part. This is the back EMF part and this is the rotation of that rotor. And this is the terminal voltage and also the terminal current. Okay, again summarize the information, terminal voltage, motor speed, motor constant, armature resistance, also the field resistance. Okay, the input power, what is actually the input power? Input power actually what you apply here as a voltage and the resultant current and the product of these two. So the PN will be then the terminal current times the terminal voltage. Right straight forward. Okay, terminal voltage, which is then across these two terminals and also terminal current, which is then the terminal current which is flowing in this branch. If you look at the terminal current, it will be then the summation of the armature current and also the field current in this configuration. That's just this. But these two are both unknown. Now looking to the field, this part, we can set up the Kirchhoff voltage law again by using this voltage equal to that voltage plus that voltage, or the voltage across the field, and also the voltage across the inductor, which is shown here. And again, we work in a DC configuration, so the DC current will be flowing this branch. That means the reactance of this L sub F for the field inductance will be zero. That will simplify this expression and we can just calculate now using this expression the field current because we know the terminal voltage and we also know the field resistance. That will be then 250 over 100 will be then 2.5. Okay, now moving on to the armature. Armature part is this and we again can apply the Kirchhoff voltage law. We can say this terminal voltage will be then the voltage across this armature plus the voltage across this inductor, inductor part and also the back EMF that's actually shown here. And again, we can say the similar situation. At DC, the inductor of the armature part will be zero, reactance of that part will be zero. So we can delete that in this expression. So we only have the, the, sec, the first and the second term. Now rewriting this for the current, we can have then for the armature current is then the terminal voltage minus the back EMF over RA. Now we know this, this is the terminal voltage, we know also the armature resistance, but we don't know the back EMF yet. But we can of course calculate the back EMF using the information given here in the list. So the back EMF is of course then calculated using this formula, that's the motor constant times the motor speed, but the motor speed must be in radians per second and not in RPM. So we need to rewrite this in RP in radians per second. So the RPM given here must be then converted to radians per second using this formula. So 2 pi over 60 times the given value in RPM. If you do that, you will get 188.5 radians per second, very close to that value. Now using that here, and we can now calculate using the motor constant of 1.25, then you will get to a value which is very close to 235.6 volts. Now we, have the, we now have the necessary information in this formula to calculate the armature current. So let's do that and we have then this expression 0 0.200 for the 200 milli ohms for the armature resistance and we have 71.9 amperes. So we have the necessary currents for the terminal current, we have the field and also the armature current. Okay, let's then substitute that in here in this expression again we have 74.4 amperes. Now we are now very close to the end result because we already have the terminal voltage from the 
given information in the example. Uh, we now also have the terminal current that was actually the required uh, value here. And now we can just use this formula and then multiply the given values. And we have 80.8 kilowatts. That's now the required input current for this DC shunt motor. And this concludes this example number four. If you have again questions, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again and see you next time in another video.